Okay, let's talk about these questions. Question one is Stella a loyal wife? Why, why not? Nobody chose this question, uh, but I think it's interesting to think about. On the one hand, right after she gets married, she dances with Ed and wants to get to know more rich and famous men. So it does seem like she's not very loyal. But then after Stephen goes to New York and Stella is basically living with Laurel, only the, uh, those two by themselves, Stella repeatedly rejects Ed uh, when Ed tries to court her. Um, and so it seems like maybe she does feel like the connection of marriage does mean something. At the same time, the reason that she rejects Ed, she doesn't say, I'm already married. She says, I can only love my daughter and no one else. So this kind of answer could only be seen as loyalty if we think of her daughter as a symbol of their marriage. So that if she's loyal to her daughter, then she's loyal to their marriage. Um, and that also seems to be saying, but, 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 at the same time, uh, to examine this answer, we can also imagine what if Stella and Stephen did not have a daughter? What if they were only separated? In that case, would Stella be uh, open to a new relationship with another man? Or maybe from the very beginning, she was not really emotionally in a relationship. She was only marrying Stephen for his money. Uh, and if that is the case, then maybe if she did not have a child, then she might uh, quote unquote fall in love with the next rich man to pursue her. Um, you know, this question, I think, opens up a lot of ways to think about uh, the kind of morals that Stella follows, or what she thinks is the right thing to do, if she even thinks of that kind of question. Uh, this opens up different ways of thinking about the idea of loyalty. Um, yeah, and it, I guess it really does depend on the specific couple. So like when you're in a relationship, what counts as being loyal or disloyal uh, could be different for every couple and every relationship. Um, and Stella's story is not that simple. And that is connected with question four, which we will get to in a little bit. Question two, is it a good thing for Stella to care so much about appearances? I talked with a few groups about this question, and they all agree that it is good to care about appearances, but Stella seems to care too much about appearances. One group uh, says that maybe she is ignoring other things she should care about, such as proper behavior or like elegance, um, the way to act, not just the way to dress. Another group says that um, maybe if Stella did not have a daughter, she wouldn't care so much what other people thought of her. But since she does have a daughter, she should remember that the way that she looks also affects uh, the social situation of her daughter. Maybe Stella did not really think about that. Uh, and then another group mentioned that Stella does care about how she looks, but maybe with her aesthetic sense, how to make sure one is different from the people in high society that she wants to join. So really this question is not just about, uh, is it good to care about appearances? The answer is obviously yes, we should care about appearances. This question seems to be pointing at bigger issues of class. It's, we know that Stella grows up poor. She dreams of being rich one day. 
Uh, and so, you know, for many people who are not used to having money, once they have a lot of money, they tend to think that uh, they feel the need to try to change their life, try to change how their life looks. And so if you think about someone like Donald Trump, uh, he really likes to show off the idea that he has money, spends a lot of money. Uh, buying things in gold, putting his name on buildings. Uh, and so, like, a lot of people who are not used to having money also have that kind of impulse. But for people who are used to having money, people in high society, this is precisely a sign that a person does not belong in high society. If you're not used to having money, that means that you're from a lower class. And so that seems to be the situation that Stella is in. Uh, she spends money on fancy clothing and she like acts like a rich person. And so actually rich people know that she is not really from the upper class. So yes, care about appearances, but also care about uh, what other people think about appearances. So it's not just what you think it looks good, it's also about what other people think looks good. Or maybe not, not just good, but like the kind of appearance that you want to present, the kind of effect that you want to have on other people. Number three, this question is very popular. A lot of groups uh, chose this one. Uh, and it seems to boil down to the question of, uh, is it okay, to sacrifice the mother-daughter relationship in order to give Laurel what people think is a better life. And a better life in this case, it's a movie, we see it on the screen, a better life seems to be a bigger house, fancy clothing, more friends, um, more resources. Is it a fair exchange? Uh, and I think all the groups, no, most groups I talked with said yes. Um, among these groups, one group mentioned that maybe Stella did the right thing, but maybe she did it for the wrong reasons. Maybe she only saw the big house, the fancy clothing, the beautiful uh, new wife of Stephen, uh, but she Maybe she didn't really understand what it means to have a better life. She only saw that her daughter was happy whenever she came back from vacations with her father. But she didn't, Stella herself maybe doesn't understand why. What is uh, truly better about that life? Maybe Stella thinks it's only about the money. We don't know. Now, one group said that this is not the right thing to do. And the reason they give is because at the end, Stella manipulates Laurel into making this decision. Stella pretends that she is in love with Ed and she wants to get rid of her daughter so that she can live happily ever after with another man. But if she's manipulating her daughter, that means her daughter doesn't make a choice. She's kind of pushed into it, as the question says. The time that Laurel does make her choice is when uh, Stephen and his new wife tell her about this plan. At that moment, Laurel understands all the information and she still decides to stay with Stella. And so if that is Laurel's decision, according to this group, everyone should have respected her choice, even if it meant that she would uh, lead a life with fewer resources, less money, uh, and maybe people would laugh at her mother. But at the end of the day, if Laurel thinks that is the better choice, people should have let her make that choice. Um, and I think that is a very interesting idea because the other idea that most groups had is basically uh, the same thing that Stella thinks. If Laurel gets a better life, then it's a better choice. But that leads to question four, which is why is this movie from Stella's point of view? 
uh, and I'm thinking about the final wedding scene. We only see Laurel's wedding from the outside. We only see what Stella sees. Stella sees her beautiful daughter in a wedding dress kissing a handsome, rich young man. But we don't know how Laurel feels. She looks happy, but she could still be sad about her mother not being there. And she asks um, her stepmother, uh, why I thought my mother would obviously be here, and her stepmother comforts her. She must not have known. So Laurel still cares about Stella. Uh, so even if, or I guess even though she does find a better life, there is always that one part of her full of regret. But according to this one group's answer, if she had stayed with Stella, she would not have that kind of regret. And she would still get to visit her father and the boys on the weekends, et cetera. Um, and if the movie had ended in a different way, and if we had, uh, if the movie had emphasized Laurel's regret, maybe some of your answers would be different. Uh, and so we can talk about more about question four. Nobody chose this one. Uh, it's told from Stella's perspective, I think, because if the film had chosen, like, Stephen's perspective, then there would be no question about what kind of person Stella is. Uh, we would not get a sense of the way that she experiences her life. We would only get a view of Stella from Stephen's perspective, which is that she is uh, a gold-digging poor woman who only wants to spend his money and loves her daughter, but doesn't know how to take care of her very well. That's what her life looks like from the outside. But since we see her life from the inside, we know that she really does care about her daughter. We know that uh, she does have complicated feelings about uh, the way that she lives. For example, her relationship with her friend Ed is not a happy, perfect friendship. But if we only saw her life from Stephen's point of view, we would not know that. And then finally, telling the story from Stella's perspective also uh, makes her decision to push Laurel away seem like a good decision. Because we don't know, as I said, how Laurel feels. We only know what Stella sees. And Stella sees a happy ending. Um, and so that's really like the, the significant aspect of this film. A woman that many people would not think is worth knowing or spending time with. We get a whole, I guess, 100 minutes with her, and we really understand her life story. And we find that this story is worth telling and worth knowing. Last question. The film is in black and white. Does that change your viewing experience? Uh, nobody chose this question, but I want to ask you anyways. If you think that your feeling about this movie is different because there's no color, please raise your hand. I'll get a few. If you think that there's really no difference, please raise your hand. A few more of you. Very interesting. Uh, if you have never seen a black and white movie before, does this surprise you that the lack of color doesn't really make a difference? The thing about uh, black and white movies is that when we see color in real life, that color is not an objective part of the world. We don't say, like, this is this color and then everybody sees the same thing. Color is produced by our mind. So even when there is no color, it doesn't feel entirely unnatural. Our minds uh, give us most of the information that we need, even when we don't see the color. And when we do need to know a color, the movie will tell us. Stella keeps mentioning Laurel's pretty blue dress. We don't see blue, but we know that this dress is blue and beautiful because the movie tells us. Um, in fact, 
black and white movies have one advantage over color. Color movies, uh, the color is sometimes unconvincing, it's not realistic. But in black and white movies, your mind and the, the idea of color. So it's always convincing. There's no such thing as fake color when you watch a black and white movie. Okay, do you have questions? All right, see you next week. <laughs>